who saw something and says, you know what, this is what, I, this is what kind of what is beginning to define my life and I want to answer this about me. Somebody give me a question, tell me the question and then tell me the answer. Ezra, stand up for us, for us if you could please. I enjoy learning about uh, music. Okay, all right, so he enjoys learning about music. Jerry. I'm sorry, go, say that a little louder. So ancient history is a passion of yours. Yes, Gabby. Just so you know. All right. Yes. What else? What are some other things? Lupe almost threw up her hand, but then she put it, she just grabbed her ear. So I caution. All right. Izzy, yes. Uh, the best job or project I've ever had is going to my side of the Yeah. Um, I put uh, soccer three years, first place in state. First place in state. All right. Ashley, say it loud or stand up. The best project I've ever had was working on and performing my spoken word. Your spoken word. Piece. Spoken word piece. Great job. Yes, Corinne. The time when I was at my desk is when I took like my advanced math placement test and got the book average, so now I'm like a year ahead to that. Oh, awesome. Great job. Jacqueline. Incredible. So yesterday when she, you were serving, when you were digging that hole, all right, you got calluses on your hands. Great job. So serving is where she gets her, where she gets her energy. That's awesome. Yes, Jack, Kate, huh? So when you were working with young kids at summer school, incredible. Jared again, but I thought I saw a hand over here. Did I see a hand over here? Or are you playing with your books? All right, he was passing back books. All right. Actually, before we come to you, Jared, let's go to Aviana. Um, the time I was at my best was when um, I got closer to God and I learned how to speak his language. Okay, awesome. So what if she's at her best when she's that intimacy with God. That's incredible. Jared, again. Okay, so just when you when you when you persisted academically and you got the you got in the top percentile, great job. Anyone else? William. I was at my best was when I was volunteering for the church last year at Church I'm at. We had like help park cars, I guess, for a state fair. And I was like, I was making it fun for people instead of just driving. I was like twirling the flag, dancing around stuff. And they, every time they got a car, they were like super happy when they went to park. Some people got annoyed, but. Yeah, but that's a special gift to make people laugh. No, I mean, that's, that's true. You know what, people going around doing everyday tasks to be able to make people smile in the midst of monotony is a gift, so thank you. After seven hours, it starts to hurt. It hurts to smile after seven hours, but you can, get, you can do it. Anyone else? Joy, is that a hand? Is that a hand, Joy? Yeah. All right, all right. <laughs> Anyone else? All right, what I want you to do is I want you to begin to focus in on yourself. We're going to come back and discuss some of these things right after lunch, and we're going to spend some time uh, talking about personality type. A lot of the conflicts that we have, hold on, before you start moving everything, a lot of the conflicts we have are often due to the fact that we don't understand one another. And if you're going to lead people well, you've got to go beyond understanding yourself and begin to understand other people. And so we're going to do that. We need a leader up here that can... Uh, Say our prayers for us before we leave for lunch. So like, many. You want to come again? Yeah. 
we're gonna we're gonna hold up. We're gonna we're gonna hold up. Orlando, we're gonna hold up for the uh, one of these other leaders. Aviana, hey, go ahead. She raised it first. Sorry, Luke. Come on up. Yes, please. Um, uh, Lord Jesus, I ask you to watch over the food and strengthen our body. Lord Jesus, I ask you to have the food and nurture our body. No fat, no nothing. Take all the fat and everything away, Lord Jesus. Just strengthen our body. No, this, no, no, um, no, nothing in the food and everything. Make it healthy and everything, Lord Jesus. I ask you that they wash their hands and stuff. And I ask you that the um, place and everything are clean, Lord Jesus. I ask you that we get there safely and get back here safely. In the name of Jesus, amen. Amen. We, I want to continue talking about strengths and talents, um, but unfortunately because of time we're going to have to see if we can come back to strengths. Uh, we, I thought we ended on a pretty good note. How many people feel good about the morning session as far as, you know, I'm getting a little, me a little bit better. How many people feel a little bit better? You starting to see yourself a little bit better? How many people are still struggling like, I don't know who I am? Anyone? All right. All over the place. Some of you guys, and we're going to ask you to, uh, to sit up for us. Um, some of us, I think, this is a longer journey for some of us and others, and the reason some of us have so much trouble figuring ourselves out is because of what we're about to talk about right now, and that's personality type. And the reason it's difficult oftentimes to figure out who you are is because you're wired in such a way that if you don't absolutely know something, then you don't claim to know anything. Where some of us are kind of wired in a way that we kind of, oh, there's a clue, there's a clue, there's a clue. I'm starting to get the picture. And some of us need just the whole picture all out in front of us before we can acknowledge victory. And so uh, it's going to take some time. All of us are going to be on a journey. I would say that I've known where I'm going as far as directionally, vocationally, career-wise. I've known where I've, I've been going ever since, you know, I was in single digits. However, <laughs> uh, just because I've had that deep passion, deep conviction, and the knowledge of where I'm going, I have seen quite a few different variations and changes, and I would say I'm still on the same path. Uh, to somebody else, it'd be like, you've gone here, then you've gone there, then you've done, you know, you've been in the business world, then you've been in this, and you work legal systems, and you've done this, and you've also done sales, and ministry, and pastoring, and and, and non-profit, for-profit, consulting, and they're looking at it like, whoa, that is really, really confusing all the fields that you've tapped into. But for me, it makes absolute sense. I'm still heading in the same direction. Um, but so I, what I want to do is I want to challenge everybody to start uh, loosening up your thought patterns. Don't look for an exact science to, to figure who you are out. If you figure who you are out, let me know because, you know, We'll just give you a diploma right there with your PhD, all right? Uh, that's, just, that's just not really uh, the way it works. It's an ongoing, it's a growing knowing as we discover who we are. And so don't be so pressured. And so the reason I'm giving all of this preface is because some of you, everybody has their books, right? Some of you will look at the, thing, the material we're about to go through and say, well, I don't know. I want you to just release yourselves from feeling that absolutely I need to know and be more like a, this sounds more like me. Can you guys do that for me? This sounds more like me. You, you know, if you get caught up right or left, I don't know, just say this sounds more like me. And so that's where we're going to start and we're going to continue to move from there. This afternoon we are going to talk about defining your personality type. Personality type is one of the many ways you can understand who you are, and the ULA one is going to be based on the Myers-Briggs Type Indicator. Has anyone taken that before, like a four-letter code, a couple people? Well, if you haven't, this breaks everyone down into 16 types. So first thing I want you to do is take out your hand and give yourself a signature, a really great signature on your paper. Like as if, if you were famous and someone came up to you and said, I'd like your autograph. So sign your name. Yep, thank you, Gracie. Sign your name. You don't have to do it on page 88, but you can if you want to. You can just write it in your notebook if you want. Sign 
sign your name. Let's see it. Some of you are going to be athletes and doctors and all sorts of things. So get those names. All right. How did it feel? A couple people. How did it feel? Yes. Felt good? What else? You felt like you had to make it perfect, yes. How else? Just very natural, exactly. There's Steve's one right there. Everyone start practicing for foraging. No, just kidding. <laughs> um, yes, I know, I'm sure. Um, I'm not too fond of one. Okay, so that's the, writing with your preferred hand. Who is left-handed? See the lefties. Writing with the left hand or writing with your right hand if it's your preferred hand. It just feels normal, it's natural, you don't have to think about it, it feels good. Now switch it. Put your pen in the other hand and sign your name. Try to do it at the same speed and the same size as you just sign with your other hand. All right. Show your neighbor so they can see your lovely creation. Let them see your, your signatures and compare the two of them so they can see your, your left and your right hands together. Show somebody who see yours. Okay, okay. So let's hear from a couple people. How did it feel to write your name with the wrong hand? Yes. What'd you say? Difficult. Yes. Over here. Yeah. How did it feel? Different? Willem? Annoying? Katie? Frustrating. Is he? The same? Felt the same for some people? Yes? Ezra? Uncomfortable? Yes, Gabby? Kind of hard to control my hand. A little bit hard to control. Now, that's how it feels. Uncomfortable, annoying, frustrating. How about the results? How does it look? Great. Yes, Ezra again? Yeah, it's not as good. It looks like a two-year-old wrote it. What else? How else does it look? Is it readable? Not really, not as good. This is exactly how I describe personality type. When you're in your type, it's, have you guys ever been in a situation where everyone's like, oh, this is so hard, I can't do it. And you're like, that's easy for me. I totally know how to, whether it's basketball or math or reading. Has anyone ever been there where everyone else thinks it's hard, but for you it's just easy and simple? It's like signing your name, that's how easy it is. Yeah, I've been there too. Now, have you ever been in the opposite situation? Like, for some reason, it's really hard for you, but it's easy for everyone else? Like, uh, let's see if I can think of, I mean, there's so many examples, figuring out how to use an automatic uh, uh, card reader in a, in, a, in a parking lot. One day I was standing there like 15 minutes trying to figure it out. I'm like, I got a master's degree, I should be able to pay for my car. And suddenly some guy walked in and he's like, just get out of the way, I'll do it for you. And, and for me, for some reason, it was really difficult to do that. So what we're talking about is it's not right or wrong to be right-handed or left-handed, but if you know which one you are, it will really help you in your life. A while back in American history, they used to think that left-handed was bad. And if you were left-handed, they forced you to learn how to write with your right hand. Yes? They would break your hand so you'd have to learn how to write with the right hand and use your right hand. And so what we're saying is if you know who you are, it becomes much easier to function as a leader and function in the world. So today we're trying to figure out, it's a little more difficult than right or left-handed. Psychological type. It explains your differences. We'll go through this whole slide. All right, back up one more. And it's the settings where you put your gifts or one more down. Here we go. There is four components we're going to look at. Four components. Do you want you want to go through this one too? Yeah. And so when you think of psychological type, you're thinking of how you just how you best fit. Anybody ever wear, uh, anybody ever struggle with their with uh, clothes that you had to wear from a big brother or big sister uh, that did not fit? Anybody ever? who says, oh, I bought that, and when I bought it, it was so cute, but now I'm three sizes bigger, and I'm gonna try to put it on anyway, and you can't fit it anymore. Anybody ever do that? All right, 
Yeah. yeah. Quit looking at me. People are looking at me talking about, yeah, this morning you did that. What are you talking about? No, anyway, uh, leave me alone. Leave me alone. I'm losing again. I'm losing again. Anyway. Oh, name. I was just playing. I know. It came from that serious place. But anyway, when you are, are trying your hardest and you're being aggressive and you're really trying to fit into something that's not you, you can feel it. Um, I know that when I came to uh, Minnesota, for some reason, in Chicago, did you anybody know that Sh Chicago, people from Chicago are loud? Stop. Cherie, stop it right now. Now, I did not say any bad words. She said obnoxious, annoying, and all that. Stop. Listen, just loud. Just loud. That's all. We're not talking about your response to it. We're talking about what it is. Now, I'll acknowledge that I'm a little loud, and I talk a lot. And when I talk, I talk to people. Don't shout me down because I'm preaching good. All right. Now. When I talk a lot, I talk to people uh, with a hope and desire that I'm actually generally making a connection. And then I got here and I'm like, this is the way I'm wired. This is the way. And all of a sudden, uh, I start working around people that were very reserved and quiet. And I said, Something, something's not right here. They don't like me or something. And then, but they always would smile at you. And I thought all the people that smiled at me liked me. Then I found out, no, that's just what you do in Minnesota. You smile at people whether you like them or not. That's weird, because I don't smile at people I don't like, you know? And, you know? And so it was all of these adjustments, and that was cultural differences. Now, that's with just a region that is less than 470 miles away. Imagine that all of you from birth have been wired so differently psychologically because of your experiences and everything that you have a certain way that you are. And imagine all of a sudden you're working around a bunch of people that are so different than you. That's what it's like. The problem is because we're all thinking that everybody's like us, we act as if they are like us. And we didn't go through this lesson. We were supposed to go through this lesson over the weekend. We missed our lesson because we were so late getting up there. But it's a, it's a, the mirror principle says that we live life in a mirror. And we expect people to treat us like we would treat us if we were in their position. And what we don't understand is people are wired so differently that they treat us like they treat us. And so we're going we're gonna to try to flush this out a little bit more. But I want you to understand that if you're going to be a leader, you're going to have to get a hold that you are not, people are not like you. You see that it says three type explains observable, natural differences in normal people. Now, some of y'all are not normal. But we're going to do our best to try to explain it anyway. All right? You are very unique. Yes, and uh, unique is one of a kind, and all of you are one of a kind, but Gabby's a little special one of a kind. <laughs> and type describes settings where people put their talents and spiritual gifts to work. So now, if you understand yourself a little bit better, now you're going to understand exactly how you're going to get things done. And so type is going to help you figure out how to get things done. And I'm uh, reading a book because, you know, people that... Uh, I try to read a lot, and there's this book called "How Does Your" or "How Does Your Brain Work," and it was explaining all these different things. And uh, by the time we get to the end of this, I'm probably gonna, I want to wrap up with a with a thought about how your brain works and how you can use a lot of these advantages to uh, to help you get ahead. You know how you be, get stuck? Anybody ever get home and can't do homework because you can't think? You're looking at that blank paper. I'm gonna show you how to get through that. Any, any, anybody ever late for assignment and all of a sudden you can't get anything done and because your mind can't process? I'm gonna show you how to break through that. And if anybody, seriously, and it, this, this is in all seriousness, if anybody ever gets a sense that there's so much on my plate that I can't function and you get paralyzed and you do the least important things because they're the easiest, we're gonna try to help you get through that. And so, uh, listen real closely, pay attention to the types, uh, and we're trying to go through real fast. Be real easy because we got a, a lot of stuff to go through in a few seconds. Okay. Thank you. Um, you can switch to the next one. So we're going to 
go through these different realms. The first is where you get your energy from. Um, extroversion or introversion. Now this is not about being an intro, like totally away from people, you're shy. This is totally different. This is about where do you get your energy. So we can, we're gonna, then we're gonna go through information, decisions, and planning. But I, and we're gonna end up with, now one more, with a four letter code. Each of you is gonna get a four letter code and in your book there's a lot more information about each of those codes. So let's start with the, the, the little more information. It's not a box. Some people hate these tests because they hate being put into a box. And I want you to know that this is not a box. This is just a starting point. Right-handed people can have wonderful handwriting and left-handed people. It's just about learning where you fit. Next one. It's not a sorting system. It's not going to say you have to do this with your job. It's not something that changes. This is something developed over 80 years, started back with a bunch of psychologists, and their, their theory is, although you can learn to do everything, if your right hand is cut off, you can learn how to write excellently with your left hand, but it doesn't mean you change, it just means that the situation changed. So what's, and it's not an excuse for bad behavior. And that's one that's super important because some of you are gonna come up with a personality type that's kinda of last minute, and so then next time you're gonna stroll in for you a lady, you're like, well that's just my personality type. You know, I'm late, that's how I am. This isn't, that's not, that's not the case. And Steve was gonna talk to you about how the brain works. Okay, so the first one. I can describe introversion first. Introversion is when your energy comes from time away from other people or for a few in-depth activities. Here's my example. My husband is James and he's an introvert. He used to work at Teen Challenge. It's a house for uh, guys recovering from drug and alcohol. And so there were 60 guys in the house. And he would work, uh, you know, an eight hour shift. And all the time he was there, he'd be connecting, he'd be talking, he'd be ministering, and he'd be having such a great time. He'd get home at 11 o'clock and I was sitting home bored, this is before we had kids, bored out of my mind, waiting for him to come home. And, and as soon as he'd come home, I'm like, let's go out, let's go get some coffee, let's go to a store, let's go to anywhere, let's do something. And he said, I need some time alone to recharge. So back then he used to play Halo. So then he would start playing Halo, and after an hour or two on his own, he was all recharged up. And I was falling asleep, ready to go to bed by that time, one o'clock in the morning. But do you, are you the kind of person that has fun when you're with friends, but you get your energy from being alone? And extrovert is the exact opposite. We get our, now, both Rachel and I are extroverts, but we get our energy from being around people, you know. I am around one or two people for a long for a long period of time. My energy starts to drop. Anybody like that? If you just run a, and you just small talk, small conversations, but you get around a crowd that's big, and all of a sudden your energy level starts to go up. Like hey, help! No, I'm just joking. anyway. It's like you're the uh, Chris. Are you following us? It's like you're the life of the party. You know what I'm saying? You're that you get your energy. You connect when you get around people. Your energy level goes up. Uh, perfect example is. One time I was hanging out with my best friend and his wife at their house. And so we're just hanging out uh, probably to about uh, 12 in the morning. That's where I used to eat for free. That's right. They were living in Plymouth at the time. Now they're in Shakopee or something like that. But yeah, so it's a long way to eat now to get something to eat. But I'm sitting there and uh, I'm tired. I'm exhausted. I'm saying, all right, I'm going home. I get in my car. I take off. And then I'm, I'm, I'm like falling asleep on the road. Like the lines are looking at me, so is the wall. I'm just like, I'm, I'm falling asleep on the road. But one of my friends called me uh, and says, Steve, what are you doing? Well, he says something different because he said in Spanish, he's my friend from Argentina. And he says, what are you doing? I said, I'm driving down the highway, uh, about to fall asleep. He says, I just got in town. We're hanging, we're hanging out at Nathan's house. Would you come on over and hang out? What do you think my body did? I mean, all of a sudden, one o'clock in the morning, I've been tired, working all, working all day, then I went and hung out with some friends, I'm falling asleep, and all of a sudden, I got a hit of energy. And all of a sudden, one o'clock in the morning, my body comes alive. We go over there, we was hanging out to about five o'clock in the morning. Yeah, because in Argentina, that's the way they do it, I'm just sorry. <laughs> they eat dinner at 11, 12, one o'clock in the morning, and you know, they hang out. Uh, but anyway, so I got all this energy. Now, this is the thing. It doesn't mean that if, if you're an extrovert, it doesn't mean that you're not, you're, you're very sociable. Because there's people that get their energy from people, but they are so socially awkward that they don't connect well with people. And they will talk you into a, to a hole in the ground because they get their energy from groups of people, but they don't connect well. Controversially, there's also the exact opposite. There are people who are really 
socially introverted. They get their energy from being by themselves in their collection time. But when they get around people, they are still smooth, articulate, they can connect well, and you look at them, and because they are so good with people, you think, That's, they've got to be an extrovert. Not necessarily true. Just because you can connect with people doesn't mean you're an extrovert, and just because you're an introvert doesn't mean you don't connect well with people. So this isn't about whether you're good with people or bad with people, or you're a people person or not a people person. This has simply to do with how you regain your strength, how do you recharge? And so, from those descriptions, how many people think they know whether they're an introvert or an extrovert? Raise your hand. I don't have people. All right. How many people are still unsure? We got a couple of exercises that we can do. All right, and we'll well we'll let them. We'll. Okay. All right. Well, I was thinking, how about we go through the next one? We'll go through all four, and we break into small groups to do the. We'll let them do the exercises. Okay, right, so on pages 92 and 93 of your books is where the exercises are. So. Okay, next one. Oh, and there's just a little cartoon on this. It is uh, alone at last, now I can concentrate, study, or call someone on the phone, help me think this through. Which is which? Which, who, what's the girl? Extroverted. Extroverted. She wants to talk it out, and the and the guy is introverted. Let's go to the next one. So this is how do you take in information? There's so many different ways to take in information. Two main categories. The first one is sensing, meaning you start with what is and your five senses. So you know your sight, your hearing, your sound, all the different senses, and you're figuring out what is going on in the world. A lot of times people describe this one as the people who are more, they start with the details, they start with the logistics, and then they eventually go to the bigger picture, but they start with the information. I'm sensing, and so when I work for planning a ULA, my first thought is, where are we going to have it? What days are we going to have it? How much are we going to spend? Who are we going to invite? And once I get all the main information planned, then I move on to big picture. But someone who's intuitive does it differently. Yeah, someone is intuitive, it's more like, what's the point? Yeah. What's the big picture? What are we gonna do? What do we wanna achieve? Right. And then we go work backwards from what we're gonna achieve into the details. And so, when you look big picture, it's like, you know, you're just like, okay, this is what we wanna eventually happen. Who cares about the details? And so, you know, the details can figure themselves out if we get all the right people on the bus or all the right tools. Well, the people tools. are more sensing too. People yeah. Are, is this more like connections, hunches, and analogies? Those are, that's not Right, but if the, the people that bring the right weight, so the bring, so, so I'm thinking of, when I'm thinking of, all right, who do we, what type of experience do we want each student to encounter? Then I think of, all right, so what leaders do we need to make that experience happen? What uh, speakers do we need in order to come in and make that happen? What type of environment do we need in order to make that happen? But the environment, the people, the speakers are all secondary to what we're ultimately trying to accomplish. Um, so just a real quick example, skip this one, we're gonna go fast, you said. How do you take in information, do the whole page? If you're sensing, you want the concrete facts first, and then if you're intuitive, you wanna start with the imagination. If you're sensing, you wanna experience something first, or if you're intuitive, you'd rather have an exclamation. I already talked about the details. Sensing, you'd rather have clear expectations. So the example given was a school project. Do you want to know what you have to do so you can get an A? Tell me how many pages it has to be, what I have to cover so that I can take care of it. Or if you're intuitive, what can I do? What are the options? Can I go wild? And if you're sensing, you really like learning with organized step-by-step, -step, whereas intuitive, it's more random and sometimes story-based. And then practic if you consider it practical, a lot of times you're sensitive, intuitive, like to go for new insights. So um, how many people think they know which one they are on that one? It's, it's hard to do without, so, the, like, hard to do without the exercise. Yeah, well, let me, let me say this. When you tell somebody a story, how many people talk in stories when you're explaining something? There you go. How many people talk in stories? You talk in stories. So all of a sudden, when someone's saying, somebody doesn't get the point, you say, I went to the store, and it was like this guy who did this, this, and this, and you're like, 
I'm not getting it. I'm not getting it. And you're trying to say, all right, well, it's like this. It's like this. And you do all these stories to try to explain to them the point. How many people do that? How many people like get bored of stories and like, give me the point? Anybody wired that way? You're like, get me to the point. Quit taking me through this. I don't want to hear. No, I, I'm done. You know, we've taken me on enough vacations. Tell me what the point is. People that, people that are detailed are often and sensing often want to get to the point right away. Tell me the point and then I'll listen to your story. Where people that are intuitive, kind of wired like me, is more wired to say, I'll get the point as I hear the story. one minute to turn to the person next to you and tell them what you did on the weekend. Before you lay started, the weekend before you lay. Go. data and some more information. All right, the, la the third of the four is how do you make decisions? Do you make decisions based on thinking first and then feeling or feeling first and then thinking? We all think, we all feel, so don't, don't think if you're one or the other, don't feel bad if you're in one category. We all do both, but this is just where do you start from? Thinkers make decisions first based on logic and impartial standards. I'm a thinker and so what that means is I try to think in my mind about what are the ways I'm going to decide my life. Principles, what are my goals, what am I set? And then if something comes up, it's easy for me to decide, oh, as a family, this is our goal that fits in here. As a program, if this is how our commitments are, it's easy for me to decide on that way. The other side of that is different. Yeah, feeling. I'm also a thinker, but I'm just one notch over. Rachel is extreme. She's ready to take off anybody's head. No, I'm just kidding. She, but she's like, uh, I, 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 I've asked her things, and then it, if it violates a principle, I want to show mercy, I want to show grace, and she'll always bring back up the principle. Yes, but if we allow them to get away with this time, this is what it means for the future. not push over, though. Just be aware. Yeah, no. I, some people think I'm mean. People that work on my closest teams have thought I was mean, so I've had to refine myself. Um, but this is the thing. So I want you just to, I, I just want you to think. If, or, or feel. <laughs> if you're a feeler, the first thing that comes to 
your awareness is your emo, is your emotions. You tap into that first. And so it's basically how you make decisions. So you agree to go to um, prom with somebody, all right? And let's say they were really, you know, nice person to somebody you're pr pretty much interested in. The, the day of prom, your best friend's mother gets into a car accident. And you immediately say, I'm going to the hospital. Your first thought is I'm going to the hospital. If that's the first thing that emerges up and I'll deal with the consequences later, you might be a feeler. If your first thought is I really don't want to break this commitment, but I think my friends, important, you might be a thinker. Do you see the difference of how that process? You may make the exact same decision, but it's how your process works. You start with the emotional, that which grabs you emotionally, you're probably a feeler. If you start with the logic, there's a principle here. I don't want to violate that principle, but they'll have to understand that this is important. It's how you get to making your decisions. Does that make sense? Yes. It's what you do first and how you process. Based upon that, we'll get, probably give a little more clarity, uh, but based upon that, how many people think you know whether you're a thinker or a feeler? Okay, good. Um, let's see, hit the slide, and while that's coming down, all of them, another quick example, and this one works really well for most people, but sometimes doesn't work, but if you had a friend, or even closer, a sister, and she came up to your door and knocked on the door, and she had a black eye, and you knew that it was from her no good boyfriend, what would the first thing out of your word, mouth be? Yeah. No, 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 they got to speak English. Yeah. Where's my brother? Yeah. So generally, people say. No generally, people say one of two things. Ezra. Yeah. Usually they say one of two things. I'll just say them. There's varieties. The first thing some people say is what happened. Even though you might know in your mind what happened, or a variation of that is, where is he? Okay, that's a variation of what happened. Uh, the other side is some people say, are you okay first? Or how you, uh, you know, how, what's going on? Are they comfort them with a hug? So in the, this case, we both will do both. Everyone will eventually ask what happened. Everyone will eventually ask, are you okay? But generally, feelers are concerned with the person. They decide with the head, the friendship is, they want to give comfort, so they're saying, are you okay, how can I help you? Whereas a thinker is more quick to give advice, to do something, to, to try and get him or whatever they're gonna do. Okay, so we're gonna skip on to the next one because we got this, um, deciding on a job applicant. A thinker, she has good credentials, meaning I like her resume and all that. A feeler, emotionally, I like her as a person. Okay, the last of the four, and this will be the last thing we do before we get to small groups, is um, this is how do you approach life? We used to say how do you plan your life, but that doesn't fit because it's different. Uh, I'm, I'm a judger, and Jay, a judger is the people who like to plan your life and then live that plan out. So uh, when I go on vacation, I like to check out the nice spots, get good hotel rates, get a decent flight, and then when I get there I can relax because I know it's all planned. That's, you know, that I don't have to think about it. A, a judger usually likes to know in advance so they can do their best work. A perceiver thinks that all those details may get in the way of fun. And so you really can't plan something like that. Uh, for instance, I went to Costa Rica and I, I, I remember uh, I simply bought a flight and a hotel. When I got there, and, and I knew I was staying for a week, I got one night at the hotel. Why? Because I might not like it. And I might want to be able to change up just in case. So I wanted to get there and look at a few different hotels. No plan, no, no need for any type of, thank you. No need for any type of sincere, deep thought and all this stuff. I, is, is go with the flow, baby. I mean, if I try to plan too much, I get bored. As a matter of fact, I know that I won't follow the plan, so why would I even start it? Because when I'm in the moment, things change, right? And so that's kind of the way I'm wired. So my fun comes in the adventure. My fun comes in the adventure of actually figuring things out as I go. Life is an adventure. And so if I plan it, that's not fun for me. And so I just, let's go with the flow. 
Um, so each of these types has positives and negatives, as you've figured out. And part of leadership is finding out in which ways you do which things. And so a sensor and a, I mean a judger and a perceiver are great team members to have, but it can be a lot of times with your extreme on one side, you have to learn how to work through someone else's styles because you focus on your strengths and you ignore your weaknesses. That's how most people are. And so the, the, the judging and the, the uh, perceiving, judges are really good at finding a plan, making it, and making it happen. Whereas perceivers really are good at keeping options open. Judges are organized, whereas perceivers are more flexible. Judges like to work before they play. I do not like dirty dishes in my house. So as soon as we finish eating, I want to get up and wash the dishes and then go watch TV and relax. James, my husband, is all like, oh, this is going to be fun together. Let's work and play. So I'm trying to hurry up and do the dishes, and he's splashing me with water and snapping the towel. And I'm just like, let's finish our work, and then we can have play. And for a perceiver, you want to do them both together. Judges, steady effort, whereas perceivers are last minute. I have that whole thing up there, but we can do that later. Um, if you like to make lists, you're probably a judger. If, and if you are the kind of person who enjoys finishing projects and being done with them, finishing books, you're probably more likely a judger. A perceiver enjoys starting books. So if you have like six books that you've started and you haven't finished, you might be more of a perceiver. So who thinks they know which one they are, if you're sure? Okay. 600 books. 600. Okay. We're gonna, now we're going to get up out of our seats and go to our small groups, and we're going to help you get your code so that we can, so that we can do our last thing. And leaders pay attention because we're going to go through them all at the same time. We'll just be in groups so you guys can do some explaining. Can you guys explain it or do Lucy? All right. always greener and somebody else is late. You dream about going up there, but that is a big mistake. Just look at the world around you, right here on the ocean floor. Such wonderful things around you, what more could you be looking for? 